All right, amen. Good to see you this morning. Glad you're here. Look forward to 11 o'clock hour. Good to see the white souls. Is that right? Yep. Got it right. I almost said Witzel, and that was all I said. That was not right. That is not right. It's George Whitfield, and it's Alan White Soul. Christina. I call them whistles. Whistles. <laughs> All right. Amen. Glad you're here. Um, the difference is between the older generation and the newer generation. Are there differences? Yeah. When I say the older generation, I say the, the older generation and the younger generation. Yesterday I saw something interesting. <laughs> How many of you ever been stung uh, or accidentally hit a yellow jacket's nest? Oh, man. Yeah. Plenty of times, right? And uh, I hit one one time in Keene. I was making a little flower bed on the side of the house when I was up in Keene, we, our first house there. And I hit one, and uh, several of them hit me. I thought it was a bunch of them, and, uh, and uh, got inside my shirt. And, mm. uh, and man, it was like shooting, somebody was shooting me with a gun. And I threw my shirt off and flip flops off and everything was running. <laughs> and uh, anyway, younger generation, right? Yesterday I was, I mowed the uh, uh, Gilmore's, uh, Miss, uh, uh, Gilmore's property, Nancy. Uh, she had called me earlier in the week on Monday and I said, I'm out of town all week. <laughs> Of course, her, her yard needed to be mowed uh, last week before that. And I just didn't get to it. And uh, anyway, I normally call her and tell her I need to do it. And uh, anyway, she said, I just wonder you still mowing. <laughs> and I said, yeah, we'll get you at the end of the week when I get home from the wilds and explain to her. And anyway, um, I finished up where I was, and she was over there at the push mower. And uh, she had hit a yellow jacket's nest, and she's just standing over there by it. <laughs> and then... And a couple of them already bopped her, you know. And she's like, man, I had a yellow jacket mask. And anyway, <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, you did. And I'm telling you, it wasn't an ordinary yellow jacket mask. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's been there a while, man. I mean, there was literally not just 10 or 15. There's probably hundreds. I mean, it was it was not a pretty sight. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm standing far off, and she's over there by the mower, and she's like, I wonder if I can get by. I said, no, 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 you don't need the mower. I said, you need to pour something on that. And anyway, one of them kept following. I mean, just, and I'll stand there too. And you know how they are, Steve. They'll follow you. You're the one that stirred them up. These guys, these things got sensors, man. And God put sensors in there to know who you are. And it wasn't messing with me. But man, popped her again in the neck. And she said, Oh, oh, I think one just got me on the neck. <laughs> huh? You know? And uh, I was like, my goodness. And I went home. I'm serious. On the morning. I said, my soul. And I said, now I shouldn't have said this, but I did. In my mind, I didn't say it to her. I said, man, that's a tough old lady. <laughs> I said, man, I remember when I got stung. I remember John got stung earlier last week, too, and I remember where he was. And, and she said, and this is what she said, folks. She said, I might need to put some ice on this thing. I don't know. <laughs> I said, you might need to. I said, I don't know either. And uh, I went home, and I said, man. I said, that lady tough. Number one, she's 80-some years old. She's out there push mowing. <laughs> and we eat. I'm like, huh? You know? Just a different world, isn't it? That generation was used to doing their own work. And they were used to bee stings and things like that. They tough. And me and you were like, man, I'm about half dead. You know, one thing sting me, you know, think I've gotten shot with a gun. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not sure why I'm telling you all that other than it's a different day. The difference in generations, the difference in people, and the different mindset, you know. And uh, I'm I'm just telling the lady, I'm trying to get away, folks. I need to get over there. My mower's over there <laughs> on, uh, you know, the 60-inch cut uh, <laughs> hustler. It's, I, I just need to get on that thing so I can go home. And, uh, and I'm telling her, Nancy, you probably just need to go in the house. <laughs> Those things are going to keep bothering you until you get in that house. Get away from it. Don't take it in your house because it's going to go all over the house and get married, too. And, uh, but anyway... 
Help us help us help us, right? We need him. And, 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 and then I say all that to say this, it's Christianity. Right? Soft. Aren't we? Soft. God help us. God's got to toughen us up. Whew, I need it. Let's pray. Father, grateful for who you are. Thank you for the, to, today. Father, give them this today. Thank you for the message that we have prepared from you um, about hearing and heeding the word of God and the hindrances that cause us not to hear and to heed. Father, thank you for the choir. Thank you for the church. Thank you for letting us come. Thank you for the cleansing blood that we've, uh, uh, we're singing about and uh, that we sang about this morning. And, uh, just pray, dear God, that you speak to all of our hearts. Help us, God, to hear from you, uh, Lord, and just uh, toughen us up, Father. Help us, God, for this world that we live in. Uh, Father, we, we know that you told uh, through the Apostle Paul to Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. God help us. God help us. We pray this in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. <clears throat>
I can get Kevin Johnson to laugh for me. Can you laugh? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason for that. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it is. I guess we'll keep on doing it, man, because you're <laughs> reminding me. The preacher that preached, uh, and I told Kevin this probably, he might, you might not remember Kevin, that's okay. Um, we saw this guy maybe eight to ten years ago, and uh, he... He, his mannerisms and his laugh is exactly like Kevin's, to a T. And when you're hearing this man laugh, and, and he does just like that, and it's, you see Kevin the whole time, and that's great. I love it. I hate that for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It was wonderful. And, uh, but anyway, uh, and ironically, now this is how, this is how God works for this small world, Okay. Kevin will testify to this. He, he, you rarely text me, right? Right. He rarely texts me, and he texted me uh, this. You know, you're having this weather down here, and we were having weather up there. Um, you know, where they're calling for these tornadoes and different things. Was that Monday? Yeah. Monday, and Kevin texted me and asked me if I was all right. You know, making sure. You know, he didn't know that I was out the wilds, and uh, he was. You know, Sour City was a little shaky ground there, and so meanwhile. He, you know, I'm seeing this guy up there that's just like Kevin for his laugh and his mannerisms. And then Kevin texts me at the same time, that same day. And, uh, it's just amazing how God uses these uh, things, uh, little things like that. And uh, there's somebody out there that laughs like you and has mannerisms like you. And as a matter of fact, when I was coming home yesterday from the wilds, appreciate your prayers, good week, and those kind of things. We'll talk more about that during the prayer time. But um, this man said... He said, man, he said, you look so familiar. <laughs> he said, and I said, well, I'm from Sauber City. I said, I'm not from around here. He said, oh, oh. He said, man, I got you mistaken for somebody else, I guess. And, uh, but that's just the way it is. You look like somebody out there and uh, those kind of things. And, but he said this to me. He said, I saw uh, the people that you were with, which was Daryl and Audrey. He said, I saw them pray over their food. And he said, man, he said, I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, again, folks, people take notice of what you're doing outside. Uh, and uh, so we need to uh, represent the Lord. Amen? And I was telling Daryl, <laughs> I was coaching this basketball team. I'm not going to mention where. Uh, this was years ago. It was a Christian school that I coached. And uh, uh, you know what they would do? They would pull up to the place and they would, they would say, hey, okay, guys, we're going to pray in the car, in the, in the van. <laughs> we'll pray in the bus. You know, so we had prayer for the food in the bus. Now, again, I'm not, man, you know, that's okay, I guess. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure why we did that. I think we should have prayed in, inside. Uh, probably because everybody would be going everywhere. And I get that. Uh, but you know what? We need to be not afraid or ashamed to pray in public. Amen. Amen. And I'm not saying that God did that. But he, he might have did it just because he's keeping us all together, folks, and making sure everybody pray. And I get all that. But, you know, and anyway, uh, where it should be outside, where we go, representatives of the Lord, right? Amen. <laughs> And uh, again, appreciate your prayers for us. Glad we got home safely. A good trip. And uh, there and back, hardly any traffic. Great weather. I mean, wow, like Daryl said this morning, the weather was just outstanding. And, um, and then uh, good preaching and good services and things like that, good fun activities. Uh, Paul, pray for us, if you would, please, sir. Father, we thank you for your love for each one of us. Lord, without Christ's love, there would be no chance for any of us. And, Lord, we just thank you that you have given us that chance. And I pray, Lord, that everyone that's here has received it and has acted upon it, Lord, because we do have a part to play. But, Lord, thank you, Lord, for your presence in our midst today. You've told us in your word that we're two or more gathered in your, your name. You're in your midst. So, Lord, we, we have that as a comforting thought. And, Lord, that as we go through the day and we're alone, we're still not alone. Because you've told us that you'll abide with us always. And so, Lord, there's so much comfort within your word. And as we get older, we realize how much we need that, that comfort. Sometimes we take things for granted as we're younger. And we do things uh, sometimes uh, sporadically on our own. Uh, but, Lord, you're there. You're always there. And I just wanted to remind everyone today that we're not alone. We're never alone if we truly are in Christ. So, Lord, we thank you for your presence here today, and we pray, Lord, that everything that's done and said will bring glory to you, and we thank you, Lord, for the uh, 
songs that have been sung and the, the Sunday school lessons that we've heard and Lord the preaching that we're about to hear. We thank you for the truth of your word. I pray Lord that we might each one hear it and Lord that we receive from it what you have for us. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. 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 Alright our teacher we just have to be your teacher this morning. Dog enough. Appreciate him. Say amen. 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 I appreciate him doing that. And uh, then the Winston Rescue Mission is our missionary of the month. Certainly we'll lift them up uh, in prayer, if you would. And Mark Robson, <coughs> Lieutenant Governor, certainly want to pray for him and all that he faces. And uh, just uh, lift him up. And, <coughs> excuse me. Then our uh, Siler City Fire Department is our local safety <coughs> organization. So we're going to pray there. Happy birthday to Rhonda Johnson. She's not here. Can't wish her happy birthday. So we, Kevin will tell her. Uh, she's, she's in the nursery. She's in the nursery. So you can get yeah, Rhonda, come out of the nursery. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, happy birthday, Rhonda. Hope you hear me. And uh, But anyway, uh, on the 18th, and then uh, don't forget choir practice on the 20th, and on the 27th, uh, we'll have no Sunday school, and we'll have a meal uh, uh, after our 11 o'clock service, and then the baptismal service will follow that after the meal, and there'll be no evening service that day. Looking forward to uh, that day, and uh, praise the Lord if we're able to do this pray some more folks get saved amen and then those that have been saved oftentimes people get saved but they but they don't follow the Lord and believers baptism and that's that's an important step isn't it amen amen and uh, I was telling I talked to Haley about baptism and those kind of things and always like to talk to people you know about it it's a it's uh you know in foreign countries uh if you just profess Christ if you said that you got saved you know, they, they'd leave you alone. They wouldn't uh, really mess with you. They'd let you stay in the home and all those kind of things. But it was the, the, the public baptism. When you did that, then it was uh, showing that really showed that you trusted Christ because you were really persecuted for that. It was outwardly saying that inwardly God has done a work and you were going to follow Christ from this point forward and you were putting everything else behind you. And uh, so it's not quite like that today, is it? Uh, but it's uh, it should be... Uh, be a very important step that we show that we want to be obedient to God and do what God would have us to do in our everyday lives. Amen. Picture identifies us with Christ and, and identifies us with his work, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's why we immerse. Amen. Uh, we believe that's what the Bible teaches. As a matter of fact, the Bible, baptism in itself, has been transliterated to, you know, it's taken the, the, the it's baptizo, and so they took the letters, you know, there. And, and really what it means to dip or to die. <clears throat> Die as, as, as in the dye that you put into a fabric, and uh, and I've always wondered, you know, people. And again, we're not going to fall out with people and go off on people, but man, it's a picture of death, isn't it? <laughs> you don't sprinkle dirt over people, right? When you you bury them, don't you? You go six feet under. You don't just put them out there, you know, and say, okay, let's put a little dirt over them. No, no, you dig a hole, and you put them down in there, and you you put a whole lot of dirt over them, right? Because they're what they're. they're dead and uh and that's our picture of us being dead and then uh coming up out right it's a picture of christ's resurrection amen it's a picture of our resurrection amen that that we're going to go on to new life and live for the lord and uh, god help us right amen glad you're here and uh, good to be back at faith baptist church
for the Word of God. And I got to talk to Bob for about 40 or 50 minutes uh, one morning, uh, just fellowshipping with him. He was out running and said, hey, I want to sit down and fellowship with you. And so we talked, and it was good. And uh, But he, he told me, and of course, it's good to fellowship with other people that are in ministries in different places and, and to see what's going on with them. And he said that he, he does the junior age, which would be, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is it fourth grade and up, uh, go to the eighth grade. And uh, he said he's noticed this summer that uh, the kids are a lot harder uh, towards the gospel and the things of God. And, of course, he's been in children's ministry for as long as I've known him. Know, and he just says the, the, the truth of God's word is falling on deaf ears and, uh, and boy that's a sad thing isn't it and uh, we need to see uh, God uh, do a work and uh, I know the church uh, the next generation it's just you know goes from one thing to another so we need to pray and uh, good to have Miss Gray with us glad she's out of the hospital glad she's here this morning and uh, praise God for that and uh, <clears throat> Continue to pray for Miss Elva. Continue to lift her up in prayer, if you would. Continue to pray for Miss Gray. Uh, pray for Andrea as she goes on the 17th for this biopsy. Uh, pray there uh, for her. Uh, continue to pray for Paul. Did you say last week or this week as far as getting your information on your shoulder? Was that uh, this past week? Past week. Yeah. They said, I have a slight tear, but uh, just let the Lord take care of it. All right. <laughs> All right. That's always good. Once the Lord take care, rather go on to the, the, the surgery for it. And of course, we know He takes care of that too through the doctor. But it's better. Uh, continue to pray for Pastor Fletcher. I did talk with Pastor Fletcher on Monday on the way up to the Wilds, just letting him know that we were praying for him as a church and uh, in the death of his uh, daughter and, uh, and her husband. Uh, I didn't realize that this is her second husband. Uh, she remarried her first husband, and left her uh, after 30 years. So this was her second husband, and uh, just tragic, you know, somebody hit them head on, and uh, uh, just, uh, you never know. <coughs> uh, they had just uh, ministered to, to Barbara, she was there, and uh, again, we're now into eternity, and so we uh, want to lift up this uh, folks in prayer. That's a hard name to pronounce, so I'm not going to even give it a try, uh, but we want to certainly pray for them and lift them up in prayer. And then uh, Jimmy Coward family, we want to pray for them. I think Richie said their funeral, uh, his funeral is going to be today at Moon's Chapel at 12 o'clock. And so we pray for them, uh, if you would. And then Kendall went back home, uh, and, uh, as far as went back home, <laughs> she went to college. And she left home and went back to college. And uh, uh, let's pray for her and these others, Tyler and Walker, the college students. Pray for these on our prayer list that don't know the Savior. Pray for them. Pray God would speak to their hearts. God would bring him to a saving knowledge of himself. All right, uh, any others this morning? <coughs> Grady Jackson, let's lift him up in prayer also. Yes. Uh, the Keith family. Yes, the Keith family. Uh, Karen had mentioned uh, the lady she worked with, Karen. Uh, her mother uh, had a stroke and she ended up passing away. Uh, so let's certainly pray for, their, for them. Also, speaking of strokes, mom's doing good and uh, praise God for that. I called Dad Friday, and he had her out eating. Uh, and uh, so, anyway, I was like, well, I thought when I was coming home, we was having a around the clock uh, things there. And my dad is getting her up and about. And I talked to Mom on the phone. She said, Yeah. She said he got me out here, and we're out here eating. And uh, so, anyway, she had gone to the doctor, and um, she's got her a, a high class uh, 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 walker. You know, Dad said it's one of those you can turn around, sit down on. Get tired, and so anyway, it's like okay. If Dad wants to get her out, and I don't blame him. You know, he's going to try to work on her. And uh, <clears throat> you know as well as I do, you man, you sit around too much, you end up getting used to that. <laughs> and so Dad, uh, he's watching over, and uh, he's a good caregiver, and he know Dad knows best. I found that out. Dad knows best when it comes to what Mom needs, and so we just let Dad take care of it, right? And so that was good news. Appreciate your prayers uh, there for them. He said she's getting around a little slower than she was, but she's still getting around. All right. And so that's that's the key, right? <clears throat> Any others? Prayer request? Yes, Miss Sherry. Pray for Joshua, please, and us to make the right decisions for his death. He's had trouble on and off, and we've had MRIs done, and we thought that would be an answer. 
cancer and a doctor says one thing, the other doctor says the opposite. Mm. But wisdom so we know what to do now. Alright, let's pray for Joshua on his hip. Just bring you on up and touch in there. Give these doctors wisdom. Everybody got a different idea, you know, different things. You know, they need help just like we do. Anybody else? Again, we're glad you're here. Look forward to God speaking to our hearts this morning. Uh, I'm going to quiz you in just a minute, so be ready for the quiz. But it wouldn't be a quiz if I told you what the answers were and what I was going to quiz you on, would it? Richie, you pray for us, please, sir. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the privilege to be in your house of worship. And Lord, uh, as we were saying earlier, that we might uh, learn more about you, Lord, your mercy, your grace, and sovereign God of this universe and for the great uh, sacrifice at Calvary, Lord. And we just ask you might speak to our hearts once again through our pastor today, Lord, and just give him uh, uh, clarity of thought. And Lord, uh, just uh, give him that uh, special touch from heaven, Lord, and just uh, just use him as a vessel, your vessel today, Lord. And we do lift up all these many prayer requests. Uh, Joshua and his hip situation, Lord, we just surrender that in your hands, and uh, we just pray, Lord, that you might uh, just take care of that need, and uh, we think of uh, Mr. Fletcher, Miss Fletcher, and uh, Tom Goin of the Dollar, and Son-in-Law, and Lord, just be with them, all that family, uh, in a special way during this time, and uh, we think of the Key family, and uh, we just ask you might be with them, and loss of their mom and uh, just uh, just bless them and uh, we thank Roger going for the biopsy on, on Thursday we just ask Lord uh, uh, Lord it's our will that you might get a good report yet uh, Lord we just surrender in your hands and we thank Miss Elva and uh, just continue to believe with her and Connie and just uh, provide whatever is needed there we thank you for Miss Gray being here today Lord and Thank you that uh, he's able to come out to the house of the Lord. Thank you for her faithfulness. And thank you for Charlene, uh, the Lord ministering to her. And we just ask you might bless both of them. Uh, we ask you might be with all of our college students, uh, Kendall and Walter and Tyler, and just uh, uh, watch over them during uh, the year and just uh, uh, put a hedge of protection around the Lord and uh, just uh, bless their studies there. We thank you, Brady Jackson, Lord, and be with him. And just Still praying, Lord, that he might be uh, back in the services uh, real soon. Uh, we thank you for what you've done for Miss Shutt, Lord. We ask you might be with Mr. Shutt, too, as he uh, uh, waits on her and just give him strength uh, for this task. And uh, we thank of Aaron and Charlene. Uh, I'm going to uh, Alan and uh, Lord, you know God bless uh, his wife, and thank you for them being in the service. Christina, Christina, for being in the service today, and, and just bless them, and uh, continue to bless their marriage. And, and Lord, once again, uh, we just thank you for your love and your mercy and grace, and we just uh, ask all these things in your precious name and in your son's name for, uh, and, uh, for his love. Uh, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Appreciate that, Brother Richie, as you turn in your Bibles. Uh, to the book of Hebrews, <clears throat> we started uh, these messages a couple weeks ago and entitled uh, Hindrances to Hearing and Heeding, hearing, hearing and heeding, uh, God's Word. And uh, last week we talked about the first one, <clears throat> and you'll find there's, there, there, there's five of these uh, in the scriptures, and some of them... Uh, I mean, as far as the, the passages of Scripture are, are, uh, <clears throat> are subjects are difficult. Today's, today's not one of them, uh, but um, we will get to one that uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to figure out. But we said at the very beginning uh, of this uh, that, that <clears throat> uh, the writer of the book of Hebrews is writing to who? Christians. He's writing to believing Hebrews or believing Jews, right? And uh, so uh, he's dealing with uh, believers. 
And uh, that's important to know in context who he's talking to. He's not talking to unbelievers. And so we need to make sure that we understand that when we're looking at these difficult passages of Scripture. <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> um, that, uh, when we're, 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 we're dealing with the particular sections that we're dealing with. And uh, last week, we talked about the first one, and it was what? Say it out loud. It's one of the problems that we have as believers. We slip. Huh? Slip. Slip. That's another word. They uh, all start with D. <laughs> but it is slip. All right, let me give you a hint. Uh, every time I think about this word, I think about uh, uh, Jim Friesen and the song that he sings. Drift. Drifting. All right, drift. Uh, you're drifting too far from the shore. And oftentimes what happens in our life, we drift away from God's word and what God teach, teaches, right? And, and we said in chapter 1, uh, again, the whole book of Hebrews is about Christ is better than. Amen? And that's what you ought to think every time you, you're reading the book of Hebrews, Christ is better than. He, not, he might not mention something specifically in the scriptures that you might be dealing with, but you still need to come back and say, Christ is better than. Anything, anyone, whatever it might be in your life that you think is better than, Christ is better than. Amen? Amen? And he tells us about him upholding the worlds, and if you've seen God, you've seen him. He's, he's the very essence of God. He is God. Amen? And, uh, and so... Uh, these people, again, they wanted to go back and, and uh, to the old, uh, and, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, a life and the sacrifices and all these other kind of things because it was them doing something. And uh, so it's easy after you get saved uh, to drift away from the Word of God, that, that, that God not only is the Savior, but He's the sanctifier. Amen. Uh, and, and so the book of Colossians says this, As ye have received him, so walk ye in him. Amen? And so the same way that you believed and received the Lord Jesus Christ is the same way that you need to walk with him. Amen? Believe and receive uh, who he is, what he says, and what he is doing. And now, as I said, we're not going to go through the, uh, the, the, all the book of Hebrews. We're just going to go through these five things that are there uh, for the believer. And so today, it's um, doubting God's Word. And that's a major league hindrance to us hearing and heeding God's Word. Doubting His Word. Not only drifting, and what you're going to see is a progression here. Drifting away from God's Word, when you don't really, you know, you, you, you're not hearing His voice, causes you to doubt God's Word. Right? Amen? You need to get into all kinds of things. And that's exactly what happened here, so let me give you the backdrop. We're going to be looking in Hebrews chapter 3 and 4. Hopefully we'll get through these uh, things uh, this morning. Um, and, uh, but uh, uh, this is where we're going to look. But let me give you, the, the, again, the context of the scripture here. Uh, God is going to, uh, through the writer of the Hebrews, which I believe was the Apostle Paul, uh, he's going to talk about uh, Christ is superior to Moses. And uh, these people would look back to these characters in the scriptures and, and, and they would put them too high on a pedestal. And by the way, folks, listen, don't put men, preachers, or anybody else, missionaries, on pedestals. Amen? That's not where they belong. They need to belong in the same spot that every man belongs, and that's below the feet of Jesus. Amen? Christ is the only one on a pedestal. Amen? He's the only perfect man, and he's the one we need to worship and uplift and praise. I know you have different preferences and things like that, but at the end of the day, it's Christ and Christ alone. Amen. Amen? That's who we need to see, and that's what we need to see in the Scripture. He's superior to Moses. And, and so, uh, again, he's going to talk about the, the uh, where... Now, I've said this to you before, and we're talking about this on Wednesday night. The Egyptian bondage. When the, when the people of Israel were in, under the Egyptian bondage, it's the same, it's a picture of our bondage to sin. Okay, they were, they were under uh, Egyptian rule and, and we were under the rule of sin. And God delivered us from that, right? Amen. And uh, they had to believe and trust God that God would deliver them from Egypt. 
And you and I had to believe and receive that God would deliver us from our sin. You with me? Right? Amen? And, uh, but after that, they had to continue to believe God. They, they didn't need to doubt God. They believed that God, he, he rescued them right out of Egypt, out of that bondage. And now God wanted them to believe them in the wilderness wanderings and, and those kind of things. And, and so God brought them to a place. He brought them out of there. And then he brought them to that place. You know that place, right? Katie's Barnea. Y'all remember that place? Uh, he brought them there. And, and of course, they, uh, Moses had sent out these spies. And, and um, uh, 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 you remember ten were bad and two were good. And a little song there. And uh, let the children sing. And, and, and Caleb <coughs> and Joshua and Moses said, hey. <laughs> they didn't say hey. <coughs> I said hey. Oh, you need to believe God. What God said. God has given us this land. But these other ten spies, they came back and, and they said, oh, man, there, there's giants in the land. There, there's no way this is impossible. Right? You remember? And guess what happened? The people believed who? They believed the ten spies. Of course, ultimately Satan, right? He, he's, 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 he's the one that gets us to doubt. Yeah, it goes all the way back to Genesis, doesn't it? To our forefathers, uh, Adam and Eve, right? They, they rather, and, and aren't we still guilty of that today? Now, that's just, it's, I know it's unfortunate, folks, but it's just truth. God's people, I and mean, we're talking about the world, right? We're talking about God's people. We'd rather believe the lies of the devil than the truth of God. It's crazy, isn't it? Isn't it? And we talked about this. God, now this is in the book of Hebrews. It's, again, these are believers. God has saved them. Amen. This is a second uh, a generation. is a generation after their, their fathers have been saved. We're, we're down the line to the next generation. And, and uh, man... God has saved their soul. He's given them eternal life, just like you and me, right? Eternal life. And yet we can't believe him for our everyday life. We doubt him. Or maybe I doubt him and you guys don't. But I believe you do too. I believe we all do. Right? And, and here's what he's going to talk about here. That, 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 that awful sin of unbelief. Of doubting God. Now, folks, we wouldn't, we wouldn't say, we wouldn't list unbelief as a great sin. <laughs> Doubting God, we wouldn't list that, you know. We'd list like murder and rape and adultery and all these other kind of things. That's what we would list. We'd have these, these great sins, but the Bible says it's unbelief. It's doubting God. That's what leads to all these other things. It really does. In all of our lives, we start drifting and then we doubt. And so here, he's going to talk about what happened there. And he's going to mention these, these things of rest. And, 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 and really, when we're talking about rest, we're, going to, we're talking about peace, and we're going to try to infiltrate all those things together. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's three types of rest in the Scriptures. <clears throat> there's three types of rest. And the first rest is, again, it's a, it's a rest in salvation. Amen. It's, the, it's what God has done in the past in saving our souls, amen. It's called peace with God. Aren't you glad if you're born again? I say amen. amen. And aren't you glad you have peace with God? Amen. Right? Amen. There's no longer a war between you and God. There's a war between your flesh and God. But God, hey, he's brought peace, right? Amen. Peace with God. Right? That's the first rest. And then there's a, another rest that the scripture teaches about here. And this is the rest that because uh, remember, how many people were delivered from Egyptian bondage? All of them. All of them. I mean, they were all delivered. And so they all had uh, what we would call that salvation, right? But they all didn't have this next one. The, the next one is the peace of God. Amen? The peace of God. Now, you know what? The, the peace of God fluctuates in our lives, doesn't it? It's one of those things that is, in it. it doesn't have to be that way though, right? Amen. But you have the peace of God by doing the will of God, right? Hearing and heeding. So you have the peace of God. And not all these people had that rest. They, 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 didn't, they, they doubted God. And so remember all the adults except for Caleb and Joshua. 
All of them, that generation, all of them, they died in the wilderness. Isn't that terrible? They, they, they never got to, to, to be able to rest in Canaan land. Now remember, a lot of Psalms are wrong, remember? Canaan is not heaven, <laughs> right? Canaan is full of wars and battles, but you can, you know what? You can have the peace of God in the midst of the wars and the battles, right? And then there's a future sense of rest, which God talks about here. It's that, again, it is, it is, it is the, the, the peace with God and the peace of God eternally. Amen? And that's, it. that's when we leave this world, amen? And uh, we're not there yet, are we? Now, we have that past peace. We have peace with God, amen? That, that middle wall partition has been broken down in our lives, and amen, we got peace with God. And then that peace of God, it kind of fluctuates, doesn't it? Because of us. We don't hear and heed God's word. We don't listen. We drift and then we doubt. And, and, uh, but there's coming a day where there's going to be no drifting, no doubting, no anything, amen. And it's going to be all peace, praise God, right? Peace with God and the peace of God. We're going to have that, what's called, that eternal rest one day, amen. And praise God for that. And so let's talk about that here. And, of course, he's going to go back. You're not going to turn there, but you can go look later. Uh, he's going to pull passages of Scripture out of Psalms uh, where David talks about this and the wilderness wanderings and the things there. And we're also talking about it on, on um, Sunday nights in, in Psalm 78 of uh, how the people just continually doubted God and wouldn't believe God. And, and so that's what you're going to see here. We're going to pick up the reading in Hebrews chapter uh, 3 and verse 7. And, again, let me give you the context. He's just talked about Moses and Christ. And, he, and he's going to say to them, he said, who is greater, right? Who, uh, who the house or who built the house? Uh, uh, who's greater? The house or who built the house? Who built the house, amen? And Moses is a picture of the house. And uh, he's just, just doing what God would have to do. But Christ, amen, he built the house, amen. He, he built Israel. He built all these things. And, 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 and I'll tell you this, folks, listen. Who's greater, the creation or the creator? The creator, amen. And uh, we need to see that, right? And so he comes down here and he's explained that to these folks because, again, they're, they're, you know, they're like us. They're worshiping Moses, <laughs> you know. They're putting him on that pedestal, you know. He was an, and Moses was an important figure, right? Amen? Amen. But, but, hey, again, God, I've said this to you folks. Listen, the hero of the Bible is God. Amen? The hero of your life ought to be God, not somebody else. And people ought to be teaching you about God, amen. He ought to be your hero, praise God. Amen? amen. Now, you got heroes, and I got heroes, and all these other kind of people. I tell you, our hero needs to be God, amen. Amen? The Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God. And so he says this again. There's that word again. Wherefore, in verse 7 of chapter 3, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, not tomorrow, not yesterday, today, if you will hear his voice, Okay? Right now, in the midst right here, amen? If you'll hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation, the day of temptation in the wilderness. I just mentioned to you what happened to these people. Because they doubted God and didn't believe him. He says, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. <laughs> How much more does God have to prove himself to us? Right? Last night I was driving home uh, from the church after doing the bulletin and, and I, I looked down uh, for a split second. I'm talking a split second, folks. And I looked up and there was two massive deer in front of that little Civic that I'm driving. And somehow, some way, I still don't have a clear picture of it in my mind. I didn't hit those deer. They, they were right there in front of me. Just I'm talking about a quick glance down and a quick glance up. And man, they somehow missed the vehicle. A miracle of God. That's all I can say. I don't know how in the world that happened. And, uh, but uh, instantaneously, you know, uh, this, this, this came about. And, 
And how much more of that do I have to see in my life? God's protective hand, God's things that he's done in my life over the years. And how much more do you need to see God work in your life to believe God? Right? It's always something else, right? God give me, God has given you everything in his son. Amen. Is that not true? Romans chapter 8. He that spared not his only son, how much more shall he freely give you all things in him? Amen. Everything goes through Christ, right? Amen. Amen. So he says, here I, I showed him my works. And I know, folks, listen, we're so guilty, aren't we? Aren't we guilty of looking back and saying, man, I'll tell you, if I was walking with Jesus, man, if I could have just seen him perform one of these miracles. I, and I'll tell you, I believe. No, you wouldn't. He's given us 66 books, folks, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, who he is and what he's done and, and what he's still doing today. Amen. And yet we still don't believe. Now, folks, listen, I don't know about you, but I, I think you're guilty. Now, I know I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty of doubting God and not believing God. But I believe you are, too. I believe we all are. I believe we doubt him. He does all these things. But notice what the Bible says here. He says, wherefore... I was grieved with that generation and, and, and said, this is what God said about them. They do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. Man, what do you think God's saying about this generation, us today? What is he saying about you and me today? Mm, right? God help us, right? And this is what he said. He said, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Now, what rest is he talking about there? Now, folks, listen to me. He's not talking about salvational rest. They've already had salvational rest. They've been delivered from Egypt, the bondage, right? He's talking about Canaan land rest. Do you know most people will never live the victorious Christian life? They will never rest in, the, in, in, in this life, walking with God, just trusting God and not doubting Him. Most Christians will never live there. And by the way, folks, listen. I hope that you're with me this morning. Are you with me this morning? How many people entered into that land? Now, we're, we're not talking about the younger generation. The younger generation did enter into the land and went with Joshua. And Caleb, but the older generation, how many of them went in? Two. 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 Joshua. Okay. Joshua and Caleb. Out of how many, Pastor? Well, we believe it's probably a couple million. Yeah. Yikes, isn't that? That's... Now, folks, listen. We take the good and the bad, right? In the scriptures. The Bible says, use these people as examples. <laughs> two out of two million. That's a yikesters, isn't it? Isn't it? But then you go, right? You, you, go, you go further back and you say, when, when God destroyed the, the whole world with a flood, there was more than two million there. <laughs> and only eight people got on the ark. That's crazy, isn't it? Right? It really is. And so really it tells us something. Folks, listen to me. Most believers aren't going to believe. After they're saved. After they believe. You know what? You know what Big Bob told me? This was weird. Now some of these things are refreshing, but they're not so refreshing. You know why? Because I put Big Bob on a pedestal. You know, I look at Big Bob and say, man, what a great God. He loves the Lord, walking with God. He can't be like me. You know what he said? He said, there's times in my life that I look at my life and I think about how wretched I am and that God saved me. And he, he says, and, and these battles that I face to doubt God, you know, matter of fact, he says, man, I don't always read your text. He said, because, you know, they're convicting. And I said, man, I don't even want to read those things, you know, and I want to do it. And I'm like, Big Bob, man, you can't be like me. No, Big Bob, you can't be like me. And he says, you know, sometimes I wonder, he said, I think, man, do I be better? Now, when he's saying this, folks, he's talking about living the life. Letting God work. I said, man, it'd be better off if I was just lost and didn't know anything about God and things of God. Why? Because, hey, uh, too, too much is given, much is required. Right? 
And oftentimes people don't want to get in the Bible because they know what the Bible says and they know what they're going to have to do. Or again, allow God to do in their hearts and lives. And so, hey, hey, I can't do that, da, da, da. So, hey, they think they're getting, but no, you're not. Right? God wants to start right now, right here, today, that you say, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. Not myself. I'm going to believe God. Don't harden your heart. Don't doubt God. Believe God's word. Because, because a doubting heart leads to a hardened heart. You're going to see that in the scriptures. These people just refuse to believe God. Now, folks, listen to me. You do understand now. These are the same people that God opened up the Red Sea. <laughs> they saw him. All these things. They, what God did. These are the same people that the Egyptians said, Hey, we want to give you all our jewels. <laughs> he said, hey, we, hey, we've seen what God's done. These are the same people that saw all them plagues. These are the same people that, 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 that again, uh, God protected from all these things. Right? And you're the same people that, that God, all through your life, has done so many miraculous things for you. Amen. Amen. And watched over you. Right? Amen? We're, we're the same people. And he, he said they're not going to get that rest. And so that's what he says in verse 12. Now, you're going to see this all the time. Take heed. Who's he talking to? He's talking to them, but he's talking to you and me. He says, take heed. Who? Say that with me. Brethren. Right? He's talking to believers. He said, lest there be in any of who? You. you. <laughs> right? Because you're part of the brethren. You're part of the group. And notice what he says here. In any of you, an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Right? That's what happens, folks. We drift away from God's word, and then we begin to doubt God's word, and then we start making decisions, and our heart gets hardened towards God and towards God's way in our lives. Right? This is what hinders us from hearing and heeding the word of God. The Bible says in uh, Romans chapter 10, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen? Now, folks, that's not just for salvation. You know that, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Belief comes from the spirit of God and the word of God. You're going to see that, I hope, so clearly at the end of chapter 4 here. So let's move on. Look what he says in verse 13. But exhort one another daily. While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold from the beginning our confidence, our belief, steadfast unto the end. While it is said, quoting that scripture, Psalm 95 again, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke Howbeit not all came out of Egypt by Moses, but with, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom he that, and to whom he sware, he that uh, shall not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see, okay, right? And this is one of them spiritual things, right? We see with our spiritual eyes. They could not enter in because of unbelief. And I'm telling you folks, listen, you'll never have victory and I'll never have victory when we doubt God and His Word. We'll never have peace of God in this life as long as we're going away from His will in our lives, trusting Him for whatever it is in our lives. Now, everybody wants the peace of God, folks. We all do. But you only have that by... Hearing and heeding the word of God. And a hindrance to that is doubt. Not believing God. Now I want to go back up to the verse 13. Because this is so important in our lives. I don't know how God will call you to do this folks. It's totally up to God. He says this. He said but exhort one another daily. Can I ask you a question? Are you exhorting other believers daily? Are you? You should be. That's what he says. He, he said, we need to help each other. 
And really, I, I say this to you because this is, this is where God has me. That's why I send these texts out daily. To exhort people to walk with God. This is what God's called me to do. He hadn't called you to do that. And that's fine. That's okay. You realize that? And I'm okay with that. Whatever God, but he does say we're all supposed to be exhorting each other. Because you know why? We all doubt. We all have doubts and we need to help each other. This week was amazing. Now, folks, listen. You know, when I first started this five years ago, God said, now this is hard to do, but he said, let me take care of it. I'll do the blessing. You forget about it. You just do what I tell you to do. It's going to be unseen. I'm going to take care of it. You don't try to get into do this yourself. And, and you know how it is when God tells you that. You want to get into it to yourself. You want to do these things. You want to know. You want to do all these kind of things. And, and God says, get your hand off of it. I got it. Leave it alone. And so that's what I've tried to do over the last five years. But it's hard. It's difficult. Man, you, want to, you want to see results. And so last week, I had two people text me and say, take me off of that list. Now, let me ask you something. Is that hard or easy when somebody does that? It's hard. It's like, oh, man, it's just. Yeah, they said, take me off. And, and they explained why I did it. And I was gracious and safe. But in my, inside of me, I'm like, well, I, don't want to know. I really want to know. And, and God says, you know, I'll tell you to leave this alone. <laughs> take them off the list and just move on. Right? The very next day, Becca texted me. She said, oh, I forgot. Miss Craven wants you to put her on this list that you're sending to her husband. And so she can be blessed by these things that you're sending out. She wants to see them. I'm like, oh. So I go from to hey. And then Mr. Craven, I talked to him this week, and he said over this past winter that he used these things every day with eight men that he had a crew with working. He used that nugget uh, for them to start off their day and prayed over it. <laughs> and you know what I said? I said, to God be the glory. He said that he would do that. Now God doesn't God does tell you to do something that he's not going to work. And do what he says he's going to do. Now, folks, listen. Guess what? It has absolutely nothing to do with me. That's what we got to understand. And that's what you got to understand. Who are you exhorting? Who are you? And you know what we do? We run people down. And you know, people fail oftentimes because we fail them. Hello? Who are you exhorting? He said, exhort one another daily. And by the way, the same passage of Scripture, uh, we, we, we're not getting to it today because it's in Hebrews 10. <laughs> he, he tells us to not forsake the assemblies of ourselves together. Is that what he said? Yeah. But he tells us to exhort one another. Amen? In that same passage, he's going to talk about it there. That we're, We need to provoke one another unto good works. And so we need to talk, just like Daryl said this morning, <coughs> Uh, in, in, in open assembly, this is not, this, this, these are all things because, you know, we don't want to tell people the truth. We're scared. Now, again, you got to do this in love, folks, and you, and you do have to make sure that God is working and all these other, but it, listen, just the same way that we fall and we know our own heart, that we can doubt God, we got to encourage people for belief, amen, and give them hope, praise God, that, that God can work in their hearts and lives. Do you realize that? Problems that people have, <clears throat> difficulties. Now I tell you, folks, listen. I'll just be honest with you. I love, I love little children. There were so many little children there this week because you could bring your children and stuff. And I love talking to children. And I, I love to. And, and they're so listen. They're all uncomfortable with you and stuff. But you know what? They get comfortable with you if you really enjoy them and you really want to try to help them come out of their shell. Some of them are shy. Some of them are this and that and other. And I found a little way, this little hand. And I don't even know how, why I even started it. I have no clue at all. Just giving this little fist bump, boom, shakalaka. But every <laughs> single one of these little kids, they love this. It's just like a, a drawing. But, you know, I love to see them smile and enjoy. Listen, don't you want people, so I'm talking about spiritually, don't you want them to have the real peace of God and the real joy of God, the real love of God? We all fail in this, folks, but... And we got, and by the way, Satan's gonna fight you most when you're trying to do what God wants you to do in life. He's gonna bring hindrances and all these other kind of things, and we gotta, and, and, and that's why he says the deceitfulness of sin. You know the devil's not like God, right? It's a facade. 
The devil puts these things out there and, 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 and he, he, he tries to mimic God and all these other kind of things, but he's not God. He's going to try to reach you with lies and deception and all these other things. God wants you to follow truth. Amen. And the truth is, God is who he says he is. Amen. And God is going to do what he says he's going to do. Amen. No matter how long it takes, you've got to believe God. Amen. Don't, don't be part of the multitude, the two million. Be a part of Joshua and Caleb, amen, and say, we believe God, amen. Who cares what all that looks like? We believe God, right? Oh, we can go into so many different things here, but we, we got to move on. We got we to go. Oh, we definitely got to get rolling here. And uh, notice what he says here. He says, uh, let us therefore fear, lest the promise be left of us entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. The gospel is the good news. The good news of what? That God delivers. God is who he says he is. God help us. He said it was preached unto them. He said, uh, for the uh, preached as well as unto them. He said, but the word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith with them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said. As I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, God did rest on the seventh day from all of his works. And in this place again, if he shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Now again, he's not talking about salvational rest. He's talking about the peace of God, the rest that we find in laboring for God in Canaan land and God giving us victory after victory, uh, 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 step by step, believing God, trusting God. And then he says this, and again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David today. After so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. I say to you again, today, right now, I don't know what you've done in the past. I know what I've done in the past. Only you know. But today, praise God, aren't you glad that God is the God of the day? Amen? Right? Right? It's not whether or not you believe God yesterday or the day before or all those other kind of things. The question is... Today, will you believe God? Amen. Or will you harden your heart some more? Will you doubt God? Now the Bible's translated Jesus here, but this is Joshua. Same wording there. In verse 8, For if Jesus had given them rest, then, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There, there, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he hath also ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Now again, what rest he's talking about here? He's talking about the future rest. You see, listen, Joshua, when he led them through, listen, they didn't have rest from their works. <laughs> they had battles. Now they had rest from their own works, but they had battles and fights and things. And, and listen, what were they doing when they entered into Jericho? What were they doing, folks? Now, Jericho again, again, another, the, the Jordan, right? And, and, and it parted, and, and they had to walk through, right? That, again, picture of their death to themselves, right? And then going into the land. So when they went into Jericho, what's the plan here? Walk around the city. Walk around the city, but I mean, why Jericho and then where? Everywhere else in Canaan, all the things. Listen, let's go back to what God promised, right? Amen. To Abraham, to uh, Isaac, and to Jacob. Remember when Abraham was there and Lot went his way? Uh, and and he, Abraham was by himself? He had now fulfilled everything that God told him to start with, right? <laughs> he said, get out of there and get away from your family. But hey, you know, these people came along. Now they're gone. It's just God and Abraham. Remember what he said? He said, he said, look, he said, look to the north and the, and the south and the east. He said, hey, go here. Hey, hey, hey. The honest. He said, I promised you that. Right, amen. And let me tell you something. Listen, God's promised us some things. You know what he's promised us? In the midst of all of this mess that we're in, you know what 
what he's promised us? He's promised us blessing. He's promised us the fruit of the Spirit. In the midst, you say, in the midst of all this mess, I can have love? Yeah. You rest in Christ. You're talking about, can I have joy unspeakable and full of glory? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Christ. That's who he is. Right? Paul? Can you, 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 can you have peace in the midst of this world? <laughs> can you have the peace of God? Amen. Can you have the long suffering of God? Amen. Can you have the goodness of God? Amen. Can you have the self-control of God? Amen. But here's the problem. Now, you know the problem, right? It's an evil heart of unbelief and doubt. That's, that's my problem. What's your problem? Y'all have that problem too? We all do. Unfortunately, that's, that's me all over. And I got to say, and guess what you got to do? It's got to be daily. It's got to be daily. It's got to be daily. And so notice what he says here, and we're going to finish up here. Now, I hope you get this right here. I hope you see these two things. It's never changed. <laughs> it's still, it's still the same. And I hope you get it in just a minute. He says, "Let us." That's what he says. Let us therefore to enter. In, let us let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Let's go after the rest of God. Amen. All three rests. Let's know that he's given us rest, amen, that we don't have to deliver ourselves, pray God, in the past, right? Let us rest in God that in this day right now that God can deliver us from ourselves and from sin and from Satan. And let's rest in the fact in the future that, hey, we're going to lay all this down and we don't have to worry about, we don't should worry anyway, but all these things one day, right? Now notice this. There's two things here that's going to make this possible. I hope you see it. It's right here. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of sunder, of soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Let me tell you, folks, listen. If you're going to heed and hear the word of God, you're going to have to have some of the word of God in you. Amen. You're going to have to let this, this word sword, it's a, it's a small like dagger. It's not talking about, hey, the God's out here to kill you. You know? No, God's out here to help you. Amen. He, he's, he's a, the Bible there, that discerner means a critic. He looks into your life. Here's the problem, folks. How many of you, how many of you, okay, again, I know, listen, it's getting late, but listen to me. How many of you at least read one time this week, some of the Word of God. Okay? I hope all of you did. Some of you raised your hand. You don't have to raise your hand. Okay? That's good, isn't it, Paul? Mm -hmm. Isn't that good, Richie? That some of, some of us, you know, most of us here read some of the Word of God. But let me ask you this question right here. This, this is the real key to it, right, in life. It's not about reading the Word of God. You need to read the Word of God for this next thing to happen. How many of you let... The word of God read you. See, that's that's a whole different ballgame right there. That's what he's talking about right here. He's a hey, he he knows, he's a critic. He cuts deep to the joints and the marrow. He's he's a discerner, a critic of the thoughts, not just the thoughts, hey, but the intense. The intense, not intense, but intense <laughs> of the heart. He knows why you do what you do. The Word of God, it, it cuts deep, doesn't it? Amen. He knows. And that's why you need the Word of God. Right? You, need, you don't need to drip on the Word of God. You don't need to doubt God's Word. You need to trust God's Word and what God says. He said, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Now, guess what? He sees everybody in everything. He said, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him whom we have to do. We're going to stand before God one day. Now, I'm just being honest with you folks. Listen, I'm dead serious about this. I prayed about this this morning. I thought about this this morning. I said, dear God, have mercy upon me. I care more about what people think and see than I do about what you think and see. I do. It's just a fact. Don't you? Now, folks, listen, that's how you let the Word of God read you. Because that's just truth. 
Every last one of us are in here like that. There's some things that we do and say that we would never do and say in front of somebody else. And we're, we're, we're saying it right before God. But we're scared half to death of what people might think about us, but what we're not, we're not concerned about what God knows about us. And we got to, that's got to change. The only way it changes is the Word of God. And then notice this. He says, seeing that we have a high priest that is passed into the heavens. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, our belief. For we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with, uh, 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 with, our, with the, the feeling of our infirmities, but in all points uh, tempted, uh, but was in all points tempted like as we yet without sin. Man, we have somebody to go to that really understands. Now I'm going to tell you folks, listen to me. You would do well to try to understand people. Right? Wouldn't you? You'd do well in your life to just really try to understand people and how humanity works and all those kind of things, right? Shouldn't you? Shouldn't you try to understand people's problems being understanding how you do that? There's, there's a good way. You listen. You listen to them. You don't try to find out the problem. You, you listen to what they're saying. You try to understand. You try to have a, a sympathy for them and those kind of things and, and it be a reality, right? You ought to do that. But I'm going to tell you what, listen to me, folks. There's nobody in this room that understands like Jesus. He understands. He knows what you're going through. He knows the difficulties. He knows the battles. He knows. And you know what Big Bob said? He was in tears, folks. He cried with me. He, he was weeping. Now, I, I, I didn't weep because I wasn't, I wasn't having the feeling that he was having there. But, but he, he talked about himself and he said, you know, and he said the same thing my, my, my pastor, Pastor Baker, said years ago. He said, he said, he said, he said, brother, brother. That's how he thought. He said, brother. He said, he said, God knew 28 years ago. I got saved. He said, he said, God knew what kind of preacher I was going to be. And he still knows. And he still saved me and called me to preach. He said, that's a miracle. And weeping. It's so true. God knew. He knew all my mistakes, all my sins, all the things. And he knows everything you would ever do in life. And yet he still loves you, praise God. He still wants you to come to him. And notice what he says here. It's not only the word of God, but it's also communion with God in prayer. He said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we have may obtain mercy and find grace and help in the time of need. Now let me ask you something, folks. Now please get this right, because man, if, I, if we don't, Randy asked me if he was going to preach till 1.30 today since I didn't get to preach Wednesday night. I said, no, it's going to be 2.30. Please don't make that happen. But you will make it happen right here if you don't get the answer to this. I'm just telling you, we'll have to go over it all over again. And that's not going to be... Now, it would be great for me. because It would be great for you, too, if we have to. But in context. Okay, we're in context, right? And so he says... After he's told you all these things and after I've shared these things with you, he says, let us come boldly to the, to the throne of grace. Right? Yeah. So we might find help in the time of need. In context, what is he talking to come to God for? Belief. Belief. Not doubting. That's the context of the scriptures. You see, we're coming to God for everything else. <laughs> but we need to come to God and say, God, you got to help me because I'm prone to not believe you. I know it's evil. <laughs> now, folks, you got to admit that, first and foremost. It's just wrong and it's evil, God, that I would believe a man and I'd believe the devil over you. That's evil, isn't it? That's wicked. That's ungodly. God, I want to come boldly to your throne to ask you to help me in my time of need. I can go to other people and they can try to help me to believe and trust and they can exhort me. And all that. But God, you're the one that can meet my need of unbelief and you can help me, God, by your spirit. Amen. 
to just old fashioned believe you just like I did when I got saved. Simple as that, isn't it? But it's not easy, is it? Because you got all kinds of hindrances, don't you? You drift away from the Word of God, you doubt God's Word, all these other kind of things, all these other voices are coming at you as you stand to your feet. No form of irritation. I'm just going to let you go home with these thoughts. But I pray that you'll take these thoughts and that you'll ask God to, to help you not to doubt Him. Now, folks, listen. Aren't we crazy? Aren't we? Aren't we crazy that we would believe men and women and other people more than we would believe God? And, and, and folks, listen. We can be hard on the children of Israel all we want, but we're the same way. How many of you would raise your hand, okay, because I'm going to pray for you right now. I want you to pray for me. I'm going to raise my hand. That you have at least one area in your life where you just, again, can't see it. You doubt in God. You just don't believe. Right? Okay? All right, I see, I see all that. I can't call all your names out, but hey, God saw your hand. You know what he says? <laughs> he said the same thing he said thousands of years ago. He said to David, and then he, he says he, he says today, harden not your hearts, as in the day of provocation. Just believe God. Trust him. Right now, folks, listen. Aren't you glad God's so good? Somebody say amen right there. Amen. He said, I didn't say this. He said it. He said, if you have the faith, the belief, of a mustard seed. Now, why do you use mustard seed? Because <laughs> it's one of the smallest seeds there is. It's a speck on a speck. And he said, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you can save this mountain be now moved. Now, you know what people want to do, don't you? They want to run up to, they want to, run up to some mountain and say, boo! <laughs> That's just something. You know, oh, help us. I'm the same way. I want to see this. Now, now folks, listen. The miracle is, the miracle, this is a miracle. That you believe God. Right? That's what Jesus said in the book of John. The question is today. Don't look at your past. Put that aside. Don't look in the future. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'll believe in tomorrow. Well, you might not be here tomorrow. You might be in this eternal rest and eternal peace. Amen. We're talking about today. Will you believe in leaving out of here right now? Let's pray together. Father, many raise their hands. God and I raise my hand Father I doubt you there's more than one area Father but there's a specific area God I need you I need you to help me today believe you and trust you God we pray God we pray that you'd help each one of us that raised our hand in here today that we believe you today we don't know what might happen today or tomorrow but we're going to believe and trust you God God, that you're going to do exactly what you say in our own lives. And you're going to help us not to have, and when we do have this evil heart of unbelief, you're going to bring us back to the place of believing and trusting. God, go with us now. Help us, Father, go rejoicing, praising your name for who you are. God, we pray that this message is spoken to our hearts. Help us not to doubt you and your word. What's in Christ's name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.